Oh, wait. I'm recording? Sorry about that. Just, uh, trying to, uh, you know, prevent COVID-19. Um, hold on. Yeah. Crap. I lost the Lysol I was drinking. Uh, regardless. Today, we're going to move forward and look at how neurons work. You've probably already seen a video on YouTube that I posted uh, that involves fireworks, and, and now we really kind of need to explain that. So today, neuron physiology. All right, so physiology of the neuron. All right, so as we've mentioned, Neurons are the major cells, the working cells, if you will, of the nervous system. There are other cells, glial cells, but we'll talk about glial cells later. Today, we're going to talk about how the neuron works, and really, more specifically, potentiation uh, and action potential and propagation, I should say. Um, so let's look at that. So remember what your action potential is, the rapid depolarization and repolarization of the membrane. If we graph that, we go from, let's say, negative 70 millivolts up and back down really fast. All right. So let's talk about how that's working. In order to get that action potential, we have to reach a threshold potential. The threshold is the minimum voltage necessary to make the action potential fire. If you watch the video that has the sparkler in it, in that analogy, the threshold is the minimum temperature necessary to make the sparkler ignite. Here, it's a change in voltage that's necessary to make the action potential fire. For our purposes, that threshold potential is around negative 55 millivolts. That means when the membrane potential of the cell goes from negative 70 up to negative 55, then you get the action potential. You light that sparkler. You make it happen. So, why? Well, it's because the action potential is propagated by moving ions in and out of the cell through voltage-gated ion channels. Now, it's a channel protein. It's a protein in the membrane. It's a gated channel. Voltage gated. So it's like an electric door. It takes a certain amount of voltage to open that door and let a particular ion either in or out of the cell. The ions that we're concerned with are sodium and potassium. So, Let's look at this propagation along the axon. So here's our axon ending in a synaptic bulb. Now, what's going to happen here is we're going to have voltage-gated ion channels in the membrane of the neuron. Like any cell membrane, it's a fluid mosaic. There's lots of proteins embedded in the membrane. So these voltage-gated channels are triggered at particular voltages. So here we're going to have voltage-gated sodium channels. And here we're going to have voltage-gated potassium channels. So what happens is when we reach that threshold potential, when we reach that negative 55 millivolts, negative 55 millivolts is the voltage necessary to open those voltage-gated sodium channels. Now remember, on the outside of the cell, we've got a lot of sodium. On the inside of the cell, we've got quite a bit of potassium. So sodium wants to come in. So sodium comes in. If we're looking on our graph, at that place right there, that means that voltage goes from that negative 55 threshold. It's going to go up and then back down. Now, it's going to go all the way up to, let's say, 30 or 35 millivolts. That's more than enough to open the next channel in the line, which is going to let sodium in. 
it's going to open the next channel in line, which is going to that sodium. In. And it's a chain reaction, just like lighting that sparkler. When I lit the sparkler in the other video, it's self-igniting from that point. Once it lights, it just keeps going. I don't have to light it every two inches. It's going to burn all the way down. Now, on the other side, these are voltage-gated potassium channels. So then that voltage is also enough to let potassium escape. So you get depolarization and repolarization of the membrane. Sodium in, potassium out. And it really is a chain reaction. And it's going to do this all the way down the membrane, opening these channels, and then opening these channels. And you get this wave of, of depolarization, positive, followed by a wave of repolarization going back negative. That ensures that the action potential only moves one direction, down the axon. Just like that sparkler. Can't make that sparkler burn backwards. It only goes one way. So this is really fast, right? We're looking at the, the milliseconds here. But it's really not that fast. It's not fast enough, I should say. Think about moving. Think about brain to feet. Or even brain to hand. When you move your hands, you don't have to think about movement, and then it happens. It happens at the speed of thought. There's no delay. There's no perceptible delay for us. That's because we can speed this up. The way that we're going to speed this up is we're going to block some of these ion channels. As always, expertly drawn. So now we're left with some of those channels that are, are covered up here. We still are going to get sodium coming in. Let me use a different color here. Sodium coming in, potassium going out. But now the next sodium channel is all the way down here and then all the way down here and then all the way down here so instead of just going straight down the line hitting an infinite number of little ion channels our action potential skips all the way down to the next set of channels and then skips again it jumps this jumping action potential is called saltatory conduction saltatory from the latin to jump these little places in between those blacked out areas the places in between these are called the nodes of Ranvier. The nodes of Ranvier, where we find the ion channels on a myelinated axon. Myelination is this. These beads of uh, like electrical insulation wrapped around the cell to make that action potential jump faster. Myelination, faster propagation. How do you get from brain to feet instantaneously? Myelination. Those uh, neurons that go out to the muscle, heavily myelinated neurons, so that action potential travels from our perception instantaneously from the brain to the muscle. As a whole, 
This structure is called the myelin sheath. And it speeds up that action potential, the propagation of the action potential. The myelin sheath comes from two different types of glial cells. Now remember, we have other cells other than neurons. Um, glial cells. Glial cells are like the neurons' entourage. They're just hanging out. They're helping out. The two glial cells that create the myelin sheath are cells called oligodendrocytes. The oligodendrocytes are in the central nervous system. Our other cell is called the Schwann cell. And it's going to be in the peripheral nervous system. So oligodendrocytes in the brain and spinal cord, Schwann cells in the nerves and things in the peripheral nervous system. Now, you've probably heard of demyelinating disease, like multiple sclerosis. And in multiple sclerosis, uh, the disease attacks these which is obviously going to slow down propagation of the action potential, and eventually scar tissue builds up, and scar tissue is not conductive tissue. It doesn't conduct the action potential at all, so it will completely disrupt that propagation. So, things take home message here. Myelination speeds up propagation of the action potential. The myelin sheath comes from either oligodendrocytes or Schwann cells. Very important structure. Now, let's talk about what happens at the end of that neuron. Where we have the synaptic bulb. And we get to the end. And over here is going to be a target cell. What's that target cell going to be? Probably another neuron. Remember, anywhere a neuron meets its target, it's called a synapse. So a synapse, where a neuron meets its target cell. That makes this neuron presynaptic. Because it's before the synapse. And that makes this target cell postsynaptic. it's after the synapse. Now we do have two different options here for synapses. Sometimes we have this and they're touching each other. And now what's going to happen is that action potential is going to jump down, it's going to jump down, it's going to jump down, it's just going to jump to the next neuron, or the next cell, the next neuron. It's basically a gap junction. The gap junction is an electrical synapse. Now, there's a problem here now. Well, this is easy. I mean, it actually potential just jumps from one cell to the next. It's not particularly useful because of the nature of the action potential. Because if you remember, the action potential is first all or none. It's either there or it's not. Just like that sparkly example, I either light it or I don't. There's no in between. The action potential is also non-reversible. not going backwards. It's non-decremental. You can't add them together. You can't stack two of them on top of each other and get 70 millivolts. You're always going to get the same thing. And finally, the action potential is always excitatory. 
just like with the sparkler example, I could light another sparkler with it, but I'm not putting any sparklers out with that thing. But this is not the world we live in. Your responses to stimuli are not all or none. They're not always excitatory. We have inhibitory responses. We have somewhere in between. There's a lot of gray area here. And that's because most of your synapses, especially where neurons synapse with other neurons, are not electrical synapses. They are chemical synapses. A chemical synapse uses a neurotransmitter. And a neurotransmitter is released when we get to the end and we get to that synaptic bulb. Just like with the muscle cell, we get that synaptic bulb. We open voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium goes in. Our neurotransmitter goes out. And the neurotransmitter is going to bind to receptors on the other side. Now, neurotransmitters are not like the action potential. Neurotransmitters give us inhibitory and excitatory responses. So let's talk about neurotransmitters now. Let's talk about rules of neurotransmitters and different types of neurotransmitters. Actually, let's stop here and start another video so that oh, I won't have you for, you know, half an hour or whatever. So your next video after this is entitled Neurotransmitters, and we'll move from there.